Wait a minute, the EU is attacking Elon Musk and Joe Biden is attacking Elon Musk and even inviting journalists to start attacking Elon Musk. So Elon Musk must be really bad, right? Or could there be something else going on? <laughs> Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining us on our voyage to truth and freedom where we have to navigate lots of deception and curiously an odd inversion of our values where you'll hear statesmen say out loud, you know, we have to prevent people from having the waters muddy. We have to ensure that misinformation is tackled. Otherwise, people will have no trust in the mainstream media. I'm literally quoting Barack Obama right now. The reason that all of this framing is taking place is because in the public space now, you have confident dissenting voices and perhaps the most powerful one you could say Tucker you could say Joe Rogan you could say Elon Musk but certainly Elon Musk is taking his turn in the barrel the EU are coming for X because of well I'll get into Thierry Breton the gangster assassin of the EU's verdict oh transparency illicit material you probably stuff you could find on any number of social media sites and yet Musk is being targeted and Biden wants to withdraw subsidies so is Elon Musk finally facing an attack from the establishment. And when you first hear that, let me know about this in the chat in the comments. Do you think, that Elon Musk guy, he must be against my individual freedom? Or do you think, ah, the establishment are clearly trying to destroy this person? Let me know in the chat, let me know in the comments. Let's get into this story. Elon Musk is taking his turn in the barrel. Whose side are you going to be on? Well, the EU is investigating Elon Musk's ex, formerly known as Twitter, while the bloc's regulator is probing the social media platform for its suspected failure to counter illicit content and disinformation, allowing lack of advertising transparency and what it calls a suspected deceptive design of the user interface. Mm, we suspect it's deceptive. Now, Thierry Breton is an EU bureaucrat. He may look like a cross between your grandma and Colonel Sanders, but let me tell you, he talks like a gangster. We are coming for Elon Musk. We will shut him down. We will destroy him. Simple as that. They will respect the law or they will not be able to continue to operate in Europe. The EU's not meant to be like the mafia. They're meant to be just like, we're here to help facilitate stuff and to organize things. That's not how they talk. Have you noticed that the government talk about you like you're an idiot or a child? For example, they want to control the information you get access to because you're too stupid to be able to determine truth from fiction yourself. And notice that they use increasingly aggressive language. We'll get into this a little further. It's the first move in the EU's landmark Digital Services Act. So what the EU um, is going to do is they're going to do an investigation. This man may look like a Botox Captain Kirk, but he's giving us the truth. Uh, I mean, they're going to find something. You bet they'll find something. Sometimes when people turn against you, they will keep investigating and investigating until they find something, even if it means almost traveling through all of time. That seems um, pretty, pretty sh uh, certain. And then the question is, what happens after that? The objective is to shut down dissenting voices. You can't just come out and go, hey, we don't like that dissenting voice. Well, what would legitimize shutting down that dissenting voice? Well, if they did something that we all agree was bad, yeah. Yeah, but they haven't done that. Let's start looking. We'll find something. They can find the company um, and the law says they can find it for up to 6% of its annual revenue. Uh, given that uh, X seems to be in, in pretty bad shape right now, that would be sizable. So Now we've seen Elon Musk say F the advertisers. Go yourself. He's come out swinging, right? This guy is taking a position and taking a stance. This is a time where you have to look at who your friends are and who your allies are. You can't go, oh, this person seems like they might be too conservative or a bit too right wing or too social justice. It doesn't matter anymore. There's this powerful establishment that's trying to centralize all control, create a censorship industrial complex so that information can be controlled. So dissenter movements and opposition movements can't get any grassroots growth and can't organize because we've seen it happen and get shut down in the last 10 years from the Arab Spring, Podemos, Saritza, even something like Napster shows you that the online space creates dynamics that were impossible a little while ago. Now what we're seeing is a machine gathering momentum to shut that stuff down. We've even told you about how groups like Google are starting to purchase actual real estate and actual space. You're seeing how a tech billionaire like Bill Gates is involved in medicines and agriculture. Do you see what this is? This is the centralization of resources and the centralization of resources about the control of power. Now Elon Musk is of course a billionaire himself, but he seems to be on a 
different track, doesn't he? I mean, he's saying some pretty unusual stuff. He's housing free speech voices. He's willing to put himself on the line, sticking up for people. He came out in defense of me when I was under attack. But that's not what's relevant here. What's relevant here is that the establishment are trying to destroy him. When the establishment try to destroy someone, you have a decision to make. Are the establishment trying to destroy that person because they're trying to protect me? Or are they trying to protect themselves from me? This is the Thierry Breton tweet from the EU. Remember, this guy's just a bureaucrat. Today we open formal infringement proceedings against at X. Ooh, you're odd. Ooh, you're odd. Showing off. Suspected breach of obligations to counter illegal content. And the fact to use that little emoji, by the way, to do that. Hashtag disinformation. What are you, 12? Suspected breach of hashtag transparency obligations. Suspected deceptive design of user interface. If you, like, agree with Thierry Breton, what you're essentially saying is, I don't want to decide what's true for myself. I'd like you to decide what's true for me. And I can see why people might choose that. Say if you are of a liberal or sort of leftist, is the word people used to use, persuasion you might think, oh, at the moment, this machine seems to be in support of my cultural views. But guess what? It won't be one day, it won't be one day, and then it'll be too late. When they came for the communists, when they came for the Jews, when they came for... We remember that, right? Do we remember that? The best thing is use X and Twitter because it's obviously a threat to them. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't want to shut it down or go after Elon if it wasn't working. The greatest hope we have in 2024 is we have a sliver of the public square back that we didn't have in 20. And that's why they're going to try to either indict Elon or they're just going to try to crash Twitter through a DDoS attack or some sort of foreign threat. They're going to try to take Twitter down by the summer. The EU is going after him now. Yeah, they just announced this today. Obviously. No, people are saying things on Twitter that you're not allowed to say. And they're going very viral very quickly. And public opinion is changing too rapidly. You might see that and think, well, that's a right wing group. It's turning point. It's America first. It's sort of libertarian. It's conservative right wing. You might have all sorts of impressions about that space. But this is what values and principles are. Values and principles are you believe in an idea and then you don't care really what your personal position is. You just care about the principle. Hold on, do I believe in free speech? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Oh, but that means people might use free speech against me. It's okay. I'll make that deal. I'll make that deal because free speech has to be enshrined. Now, you're going to find yourself in new situations with new alliances and new perspectives, or you're going to find yourself utterly controlled by globalist bureaucracies. That's my prediction, but we're going to need new allies. Our great ally is Glenn Greenwald, co-host over on Rumble, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist who broke the Snowden story, perhaps one of the most important stories in the last 20, 30 years, probably one of the great changes in journalism, probably the moment when the left went, "Uh uh-oh, fuck those guys. He's been censored on TikTok himself. So like us, he got skin in the game. So talking about Breton, he says, this is how his censorship industrial regime works. They seize on every alleged crisis to justify new censorship. Russiagate, COVID, Jan 6, war in Ukraine. We all know that, don't we? We know that now. Ever since October the 7th, they've been accusing X of allowing disinformation about Israel to attract right-wing support. This is how Europe is attacking X and Musk and trying to shut down a free speech space. But how is the United States of America handling it? How are the Biden administration attacking Musk, because then we'll see this is a global conspiracy. Let's get into this story and look at how Biden is attacking Musk. Mr. President, do you think Elon Musk is a threat to U.S. national security? And should the U.S. and with the tools you have investigate his joint acquisition of Twitter with foreign governments, which include the Saudis? I mean, how can you even ask Joe Biden a question about the Saudis and then not look at his obvious and evident hypocrisy around exactly that subject? The extent to which Saudi Arabia appear to have been involved in the events around 9-11, the ongoing financial deals with Saudi Arabia, both energy deals and arms deals, after Biden explicitly said on the campaign trial that Trump doing the deals that he did with Saudi Arabia was disgusting. He then did bigger deals with Saudi Arabia. In that question is enough to show you what misinformation really looks looks like, to show you what corruption really looks like, to show you that they're not actually interested in. Do you know what? Elon Musk could tell people stuff that would confuse them. We better shut that down. No, Elon Musk might tell people stuff that will awaken them. That you see now, that's the problem. If someone is being attacked by the establishment, it's not because they're bad, it's because they're a threat. I think that Elon Musk's Oh, come on, Harry, I'll get on with it for fuck's sake. Cooperation and or technical relationships. It's like they bore you to death. I actually can't remember what we're talking about. I'm so bored. With other countries uh, is worthy of being looked at.
You know, that's how he won the election, isn't it? This guy's so boring that we'll be able to galvanise against Trump and people won't even know what Joe Biden is. He's just sort of like a fog or a ghost or a fart in a jar. No one really knows. You can't fight that. Whether or not he is doing anything inappropriate, I'm not suggesting that. I'm suggesting that it's worth, worth being looked at. Um, and... Uh, um, also, by the way, you know that he utilised the CIA to create misinformation around the Hunter Biden laptop story prior to that story breaking. So the legacy media were primed to report on that like it was misinformation, disinformation, which it bloody well wasn't. We all now know. And uh, but that's all I'll say. How? Someone just say how. Get out, you. There's a lot of ways. Uh... Remember the last time you saw Biden in that weird, boring, menacing mood was when he was talking about the Nord Stream pipeline. Oh, how would you get rid of the Nord Stream pipeline? We got ways. All of a sudden, Nord Stream pipeline mysteriously blew up. How will you do that? I promise you we'll be able to do it. So here are some of the ways that the Biden administration and the United States of America can shut down and control Elon Musk, which you've got to assume is part of the plan now. Even as President Biden accuses Donald Trump of threatening our democracy, he's employing agencies of the federal government to harass and punish Elon Musk, whom he seems to consider a political opponent. Why? Because the mercurial entrepreneur has the temerity to criticize Biden and champion free speech. In addition, Musk released the infamous Twitter files which showed the White House inspiring to censor communications on platforms like Facebook and Twitter. Now, thank God Julian Assange has a hearing coming up and I pray that that will be a success. But Julian Assange is in prison awaiting extradition under the Espionage Act. The Espionage Act is like, you know, Barack Obama deployed it more than anybody else, but it essentially means you're a threat to American security. But are you really a threat to American security if you reveal the malpractice in foreign affairs or are you a threat to the establishment? And is Elon Musk really a threat to like people and like you and me? Me and everyone, or is he a threat to the interests of the powerful? Let me know in the chat. Let me know what you think they care about. You or themselves. And then have a look at where they spend their money and what they're invested in in Congress and who they accept money from. And then get back to me and say they care about themselves. It's obvious. A judge last summer described the administration's efforts to control information about COVID-19 vaccines on social media as an almost dystopian scenario. He further said during the COVID-19 pandemic, a period perhaps best characterized by widespread doubt and uncertainty, the United States government seems to have assumed a role similar to an Orwellian Ministry of Truth. The White House was not pleased and is getting even by attacking Musk's business empire. Does that seem to you to be the way things go down? Say if you're part of the donor class where Joe Biden went campaigning went, nothing will change fundamentally, said that's all of the financial district donors. You know, if you donate money, you're cool. If you start affecting their ability to control public opinion, you're not cool. Do you think they would engage in a vendetta? Let me know in the chat. Biden is throwing everything it can find at Musk, hoping that the endless barrage of regulatory, reputational and legal attacks will cause the world's wealthiest man to kneel before its authority. The viciousness of the investigations being conducted by the Department of Justice and the Federal Aviation Administration, the Federal Trade Commission, the Securities and Exchange Commission, the National Labor Relations Board, the US Attorney for the Southern District of New York and the US Fish and Wildlife Service against a successful American business leader is unprecedented. The Fish and Wildlife, <laughs> what's he done to them? All the others you can sort of track. Oh yeah, that's because he does them rockets. Oh yeah, he's got computers and all that. What's he doing to Fish. Also, you bastard, the stuff you've done to those trout and salmon is unforgivable. Now, you see when Elon Musk is like an entrepreneur and he's just making stuff and I'm working on a rocket ship, I'm doing electric cars. There's a moment where he's like, oh, he's a real life Iron Man. We like him. Similarly, when I was like, oh, I'm a celebrity. Hi. Oh, this guy's fun. But if you start mouthing off, and obviously Elon Musk's capacity to impact the world is beyond anybody else's, I would say, you will be attacked not only by the National Labor Relations Board, but when the old fish and wildlife services have to get involved you think is this a conspiracy that salmon was given so much misinformation that it tried to swim upstream well apparently they do do that that's actually misinformation they've got to you too send the fisheries after him it says much more about the vindictive nature of joe biden than it does about the founder of tesla spacex and the boring company especially considering that musk has been an asset to biden's presidency he made electric vehicles the cornerstone of biden's green dream Ugh. cornerstone of biden's green dream in reality and provided ukraine the White House is wartime dependent with internet capabilities critical to staving off a Russian victory. And SpaceX is almost single-handedly keeping the US in the space race. Notwithstanding Musk's contributions, the White House appears determined to drag down Tesla and SpaceX. Just recently, Tesla announced it would recall 2 million cars because the government has alleged that its autopilot system is unsafe. Your autopilot system's not safe. 
You better call back all those cars. The claim stems from investigations by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration into accidents purportedly caused by Tesla's automatic features and covers nearly all cars sold in the US. Tesla maintains its devices make cars safer, an assertion that even Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg allowed could be true. So even the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration have turned on him now. The whole bureaucracy can turn against you. Do you see how government is maybe like a facilitator of ease, but if they unperson you, if you step out against them, all of it just sort of mutates into a hideous monster of destruction. Even stuff that's just meant to regulate fish. Hey, put a mask on, you little bastard! It appears many of the collisions that the NHTSA has investigated involve drivers not paying attention. One was searching the floor of his car for his phone. That's Elon's fault. Or not heeding the system's warnings. In the first such lawsuit to be brought, a California jury two months ago determined that the autopilot feature was not to blame for a car crash that killed a Tesla driver who had alcohol in his system. That guy's drunk. Elon's fault. The win for the automaker was a relief, but other lawsuits will doubtless follow, armed with the government's accusations of flaws in the Tesla system. A term I've heard recently is law lawfare, where you get tied up in lawsuits that cost a load of money, take up loads of time, dishonour you and disgrace you, and just an exhausting method that they now use to unperson, discredit and destroy people. And Elon Musk is the biggest threat on the contemporary landscape, I suppose. The software fix to Tesla's autopilot system can reportedly be accomplished remotely and will not be expensive, but that's not the point. The win for the Biden White House shows up in the New York Times' write-up, which begins, Tesla's reputation for making technologically advanced cars suffered a blow on Tuesday when the company under pressure from regulators recalled more than 2 million vehicles. What? The legacy media towing the line, spouting government propaganda to bring someone down. I won't hear of that. As new competitors launch rival models and seek to dethrone America's number one electric vehicle producer, doubts about Tesla's engineering could prove expensive. The Times glides effortlessly from referencing officials' claims that Tesla has not done enough to ensure that drivers remain attentive to recent public statements by Elon Musk have been widely interpreted as anti-Semitic. Interpreted. That's an interesting word, isn't it? Because you can interpret things sort of however you want to. Elsewhere, the government has just announced that Starlink, Musk's satellite internet provider, is ineligible for $885 million in subsidies designated to help expand rural broadband coverage to 643,000 homes and businesses in 35 states. The Federal Communications Commission, another one, all these bureaucracies, they can just all be weaponized in an instant, explained its decision by saying that Starlink failed to demonstrate that it could deliver the promised service. Wow. It becomes some Objective. You think of all these things, all these badges, FBI, CIA, the fisheries one, as somehow legitimate because there's a badge. But in a way, all of the legislation around them are like magical spells that have just gone piff, paff, poof. This is a reality now. And of course, there is great legitimacy in institutions like Harvard and Stanford. And I'm sure the heritage of the government, the constitution itself, all originated in ingenuity, passed through the consciousness of individual humans with a dream, with a vision. But it's certainly quite malleable, isn't it? If you turn against the government or if you speak out against their interests, suddenly the whole thing can be instantly metastasized into a weapon of destruction. Onyx, Starlink claims it is available on all seven continents in over 60 countries and many more markets, connecting 2 million plus active customers and count in with high speed internet. The firm provides high speed service in Guam and the Northern Mariana Islands, in Benin, in Costa Rica, in the Maldives, and crucially in Ukraine. Do we seriously believe the company would not be able to provide service to underserved rural communities in the US? Of course we don't believe that. What we're witnessing is gang star government. You don't do what we tell you, we will crush you. This is, I suppose, as I've said to you before, the way that the Godfather movies operate. You see that on one level it's criminality and then it sort of melts into government and you're not really sure where the line is. You give people a badge, you give people a suit, you give people a rubber stamp and the authority of an office and they're suddenly allowed to enact violence. They're allowed to shut down your business interests. Just look at what happened to ordinary people in the pandemic period. We were just locked down. If that was done by an illegitimate government, that would just be pure terrorism. Everyone shut down, you're not going to funerals, you're not going to football, take this medicine. What is that but tyranny? What we have to learn, I believe, is to reframe the way we regard reality and just sort of step back to 30,000 feet for a moment and go, what relationship do you want to have with the government? Oh, I don't know, really. Not much of one. Oh, I don't like the sound of that idea. Let me know in the chat what happens when we start talking about those things online. The FCC's decision reeks of political favoritism and is consistent with other attacks on Elon Musk by the Biden White House. At a press conference last year, asked if he thought Elon Musk's acquisition of Twitter backed by some foreign governments was a threat to national security, President Biden told reporters that Elon Musk is worth being looked at. His government quite obviously took him at his word. So who's the threat to democracy? 
democracy and what is the function of democracy? What is the function of government? Of course, purportedly, what government does is serves the people and allows the people to express themselves democratically. But in experience, what the government does is services the interests of very powerful elites using deep state mechanisms that are inaccessible and hidden from the conduits available to us through democracy. And they'll use heroes and various elder statesmen's figures to legitimise what I consider to be a type of tyrannical gangsterism. Here's Barack Obama, who to look at and to listen to, you would just think is the very vision, the epitome of a modern statesman. Listen to what he's saying. He makes some points that sound good until you recognise he's only representing one side of the argument. He doesn't talk about government corruption. He doesn't talk about legacy media bias. He doesn't talk about the censoring of true information. Of course he doesn't, because he's advocating for more centralised power. But you need to be tuned in to spot that. What they're trying to do is bring down Elon Musk, any other dissenting voice, even much smaller ones like me, by utilising the power of the state and the media. And if necessary, the Fish Commission. Understand, it's not necessary for people to believe this information in order to weaken democratic institutions. That's an interesting point, because you know you sometimes say, well, why can't we decide for ourselves if we believe something's true? What Obama's planting there is the idea, even if you don't believe it, somehow it's having an effect because it muddies the waters. Like, it muddies the waters and stops you trusting anyone. But is there another reason that you don't trust the government? Is there another reason that you don't trust legacy media? Is there another reason why you don't trust big corporations of the state? Yeah. In every single one of those examples, the media lie to us, the state exploit us, none of them are very honest, they're all profiteering, they're all connected to one another. Address that. Address that. You just have to flood a country's public square with enough raw sewage. Any information that the state don't agree with is shit, according to Barack Obama. That's what he's saying. It's shit. It's not even treated shit. Now, I would say that amidst what he is dismissing as fecal matter have been some extremely legitimate points of inquiry. He stands there at a pulpit at Stanford. It's indeed a Stanford professor, Jay Bhattacharya, who proposed the Barrington Declaration that raised serious questions at the height of the pandemic about how it should be handled. Those people were discredited and attacked by the very forces that Barack Obama is now advocating for. Jay Bhattacharya is in that pool of raw sewage, drowning and trying to tell you the truth. You just have to raise enough questions, spread enough dirt, plant enough conspiracy theorizing that citizens no longer know what to believe. Once they lose trust in their leaders, in mainstream media, in political institutions, in each other, in the possibility of truth, the game's won. Wouldn't this be a wonderful opportunity for Barack Obama to say one of the other things that potentially creates mistrust in institutions is when there's a financial crash like there is in 2008 and you've been elected on a tidal wave of optimism and hope and unity. And when that crash happens, instead of protecting ordinary people in their homes, you bail out the banks, you create new legislation, quantity of easing. That maybe stops people trusting the government. When you drone more innocent civilians than George W. Bush, who preceded you in office, who was characterized as a warmonger, and you presented yourself as the new face of a united America, the new face of progressivism, that decreases trust in the administration. What they continually do is avoid any culpability for the creation of conditions and then use those conditions to create more authority regulation and legislation. That is why you can never trust them. I think it's true that there is stupid stuff on the internet. It's true that we've said things that we've later had to go, oh, sorry about that. But what this is fundamentally about is your individual liberty and your freedom, your consciousness being a free space, my ability to communicate with you. And critically, do you think that when they attack and try to destroy someone, it's because they're trying to protect you and help you, or because they're trying to protect and help themselves. And all you have to do is have a little look at their bank balances, have a look at their trading history, look at where they get donations from, and that's it. That's where you don't need any rhetorical voice or any advocate or any demagogue or populist or online orator. You just need the facts. Who's paying for all this? Whose interest do you really represent? What money do you take from Big Pharma? How is Big Pharma regulated? Does anyone in Congress own stocks and shares in Big Pharma? What about Big Tech? What about the military industrial complex? There it is. We're out. So there you go. Elon Musk is being attacked. Is Elon Musk being attacked because Elon Musk is a threat to you? Or is Elon Musk being attacked because he's a threat to them? Do you trust them? Or would you rather make these decisions for yourself? I would rather be free and decide for myself what's true. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the chat. Remember, we stream every day at these times. Join us, become part of our movement, become part of the resistance. In the meantime, if you can, please stay free. 
Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.